So uh, thanks for having us out this morning, Kevin. It's great to be in Loughborough on a nice windy Saturday morning. Welcome um, to uh, w welcome to Loughborough. Honestly, it's, <laughs> sun's normally shining. It's normally warm. Uh, no wind. No, I'm joking. It's not at all. This is pretty, pretty atypical for for now. So yeah, welcome, welcome to Loughborough. But what have we got on the cards this morning then? And who's joining you for it? So this morning we've got 10 by mile. Uh, off between two to three minutes recovery. Uh, nothing crazy. Starting out just inside marathon effort and bring it down towards sort of 10k effort by the end. Uh, and we have Frank Baddock, 342, 1500 meter runner and 215 marathon here to show me up today. So <laughs> with, his, with his wonderful pace. So yeah, what's the, what's the plan for the session then? Yeah, very much just we're, we're going to hopefully build into it today. It's been a nice three week block. So nothing too crazy. Just kind of adding that consistency. Uh, we're three weeks out from a, from, from a marathon. Um, so starting out again, round about marathon effort and just bringing it down casually as down to 10k with no real sort of pushing off it um, and keeping things pretty much under control. And what's, so what's your uh, race plan for the coming few months? What's next up for you? And is it just straight into a marathon or have you got anything else on the, the kind of before that? So I'm hoping to run Seville in three weeks time. Nothing between now and then, uh, straight into to the marathon. Uh, we'll see how that goes then, we'll have a, a look at planning out the spring, the rest of the spring from, from there. So I've not had huge amounts done since the summer, um, so I've had a nice opportunity to build back into things and kind of find my feet again. Yeah, so what's it like training in Loughborough then? You know, you've got, obviously there's a lot of the university group here and you've kind of got your group as well, so uh, do you think it's is it a good place to train? Yeah, Loughborough, Loughborough's a great place to train. Um, I think it's very rare that you go out for a run and you don't see other runners. Or you go out for a run on your own. I train at pretty anti-social hours, like <laughs> before work, and there's not many people who want to get up and go out before six o'clock, but we still always have someone. So the guy we're with, Frank, we're with today, we meet this most mornings. Yeah. We'd run before work. And then I'd run home from work sometimes in the evening. Uh, just to kind of make us part of that run commute, which means you get the training done. Um, with no sort of stress. And back to training again, I've noticed so recently you did quite a few like double Saturdays in your marathon block. Uh, so what's kind of the purpose of that and like how much do you find it helps you? Yeah, so we do what, what Andy refers to, it's Andy Hoddle refers to as, his, as a special block. Sounds so ominous. yeah, a nice morning session. Uh, normally something at around about 10k effort, the half marathon effort. Then in the evening you do some longer reps. Uh, at sort of half marathon in the, in the marathon effort. I think it's really helpful for physiologically uh, as much as it is psychologically. So when you finish that evening session, you think the marathon can't possibly be as hard, be anywhere near as hard as today was. So you get that little psychological win uh, right away. But as much as anything else, you're getting quite a large amount of volume at around marathon effort average without necessarily doing the same, number, uh, same amount of damage as you would do. Uh, in one, in one long run. So yeah, it's kind of a good way to prepare the body physically and definitely a really good way to prepare the body mentally. Oh, that's windy. Ah, I'm going <laughs> to run over, look. So, are you planning to run in Commonwealth Games this year or what's your kind of main target for, <laughs> obviously after Seville, if, if you've decided that? Ah, uh, yeah, because so, <laughs> nothing, nothing like a question puts you right on the spot. Yeah. Um, so it's a good question. That's um, what I'm here to do. I think, yeah, <laughs> I think it's very much one race at a time now. Yeah. Um, so I'll run Seville, and then we'll sit down and have a look and see how things uh, play out towards the sort of summer. And I look back and I've got quite a few summers in a row of championship running. Yeah. Um, and I, I hate to say this, Heather's not here thankfully, but we actually haven't been on our honeymoon yet. We got married three years ago. I could be in a little bit of trouble if we yeah. don't get that in sometime soon. So <laughs> I actually haven't made a decision at all. Okay. Um, I think three championships in the summer provides loads of opportunities for yeah. British and Irish marathoners. You're talking sort of up to five spots at Europeans, two spots at Commonwealths, and potentially three spots at Worlds. So great options. opportunities for British and Irish marathoners to really get stuck in and experience those championships. So, it was the same cycle that I did my first marathon in Manchester. Okay. Yeah, Commonwealths and Europeans in the same sort of same sort of year. Um, which means it's difficult to do both. You can't do both. Yeah. But it's certainly opportunities for, for everyone else. 
in 2018. You could, of course, do both. Yeah. Because one was in this sort of the spring, and one was into the summer, so the opportunities to do both there. But at the minute, some some difficult decisions to be made. Yeah, uh, yeah. Personally and uh, take it risk I guess by risk. Like professionally, but yeah. And then what's it? What's it like to be being part of? Like arguably the best period ever in like Northern Irish Irish marathon running with you know you three three guys from Belfast running 210, 209. What uh, what's it like to be a part of that? And be I, one of them. I think it's, I genuinely think it's brilliant. I think it's great for our sport. Um, I think there's always been talent in Northern Ireland and in Ireland in general. I think there's increasing opportunities of showing people that you can go to championship races and hopefully you can start to compete at those championship races. Um, I kind of laugh and joke and say, well, I work full time, um, long weeks, long days, and marathon is one of those great sports that you can actually do that, combine good marathon training with good discipline and being able to work and sustain that. Um, but it's always a good thing for other athletes to come through and sort of say, well, the opportunities to go professional in the UK and Ireland aren't exactly that high, but yeah. that doesn't mean you can't compete hopefully at it on an international level or certainly uh, qualify to represent your country at the various championships that are there. Yeah. And how do you find, like, you've said a bit about your training in dark, training on unsociable hours, but how do you find overall working and training? And, like, I suppose the real question is, do you think you'd actually be any faster if you went full-time in the marathon? That's a, a really good question in terms of, would you be any quicker if I just went full-time? Um, I genuinely don't know. I mean, the, the logical answer people are looking for is yes. Yeah. But that doesn't always work as easy as that. Um, you know, I have a bad training session at 6 a.m. I go to school, no one knows, no one cares. If they did know, they still wouldn't care. <laughs> it's, for them, it's just running. You know, you went for a run this morning, that's amazing. Um, and it's a really nice thing to have. Yeah. So it's a total disconnect between my working world and my running world. Whereas I feel if you just running, things aren't quite going according to plan. It's easy to get absorbed in that full running world. You've got more time to do that. So I think it provides me with good routine, it provides me with good discipline. Because I know if I don't get the session done at a certain time, then it's not getting done. Um, on the other hand, there are days that I'm sleeping on my desk nearly. Um, <laughs> In, or, in the special block, it must be hard to uh, yeah, so hard to get the work done as well. Quite a few of the special blocks we would we would do like uh, sort of half marathon at a steady enough pace in the morning, and then go to school, and if we stood around, it was a full heating day. Then come home, come home and have a steady 10k or 10 mile k or something the evening. So yeah, every days like that, I'd be like, this would be amazing if I just could put my feet up and yeah. uh, and relax, but. Other days, it's, it definitely provides that structure, that routine, and that little compartmentalization of four worlds, two different worlds, um, can be helpful, just distracts everything. So, um, And then the beauty of the reverse of that is, that I've had a tough and challenging week at work, so you get to go out and run, Yeah. Uh, and everything just goes out a little bit. It's a stress a reliever in the evenings. Yeah, of course, yeah. Oh yeah, and of course, for anyone who doesn't know, you are a, is a deputy head teacher? Uh, assistant or principal. Assistant yeah. principal. Assistant principal. Yeah. Of, uh, a so very see. big local uh, 11 to 18 school, so we've got about so two, just inside two and a half thousand students on roll. So it's quite a big school. Um, I just put the new a sneak preview of the new gym on uh, on Instagram. Incredible facilities. It's amazing for the students. Yeah. Um, there's real power in being in such a big school, making sure they're getting access to all the great facilities. So yeah, uh, not too far from here as well. So. There's opportunities to run there, so sometimes I run in okay. in the morning and then run back in the evening. You said about long runs, you're like specific work on long runs. Yeah, so we don't really, we wouldn't do a long run every single weekend. Uh, there's very specific, we do use them for a very specific purpose, so it wouldn't be very often I would go out and run kind of that idea of an easy long run. And um, they have more of a focus, so last, so today's, after, today's Saturday, and uh, last Sunday did a long run, a 22 miler. Started out probably. 20 seconds a mile outside marathon sort of pace. Uh, I say pace. I'm a mar marathon pace for you, what would you, 4.55? Or uh, what do you, so I think what do you work to? Around about five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. It's not a bad threshold because you're hoping to be somewhere in and around. Yeah. That sort of marker. And, and I suppose on the road with the GPS and everything, you're yeah, kind of compensating and, a bit as well. And, and we're, we're sort of saying, I say pace, 
but a lot of our sessions come from effort. Yeah. So you talk about marathon effort. Um, because it, because there are so many different things that happen in your day, you might be a little bit more dehydrated, a little bit more tired from the training, etc. So very much chasing the pace can be challenging. Yeah. And sometimes cause a few, few, a few difficulties. And on other days you're good to go and, it, and it's no problems at all. So very much based on effort. Last Sunday, we did a 22 miler, starting uh, just outside, 20, 20 seconds or so outside, marathon pace. And then bring it down in the second half. So you're probably getting down towards marathon pace or just inside by the end. So, and then you kind of, you take a few days after that. So I did nothing really until Thursday. Okay. Uh, just it gives a little bit of time to recover and, and get moving again. But it also means there's no pressure really on like today's session or, yeah. or any session in between. It's kind of putting those blocks together. And I think one of my, one of my greatest strengths is I kind of, I look back at the previous year, you're averaging 96 miles a week for a, for a year. Yeah, yeah. And um, that would <laughs> relatively avoid quite a few sort of any, any of those difficulties with injuries. Yeah, stuff. yeah. And um, I'm not immune to them. Definitely had a couple, had, had one just before the Olympics. It's taking a bit of time to clear up. Yeah. Um, but largely, I've been, I've, been, I've been been able to avoid those sort of things. So very much about the consistency in our program rather than yeah. one specific workout wins a day. The loop, the loop we're using used to have a, a famous resident, Paul Radcliffe. Oh, used right. to live on the loop when she was at, when she was at Loughborough. We so, uh, very fast people, no doubt. Just beat, beat the marathon history then. Absolutely. A um, couple of other guys, Maddo died. Another British marathoner, ran in Athens, lived on the loop as well. So it's, for some people, me mostly, I think it's great. For other people, they just win. <laughs> it's just a street loop. Each, each to their own. <laughs> and uh, how did you find Tokyo then? You said you had a bit of an injury coming in. It's obviously not like 100% ideal preparation, but and the heat was definitely something that a lot of people talked about as well. What, what yeah. were your thoughts on it? So Tokyo is Tokyo is great. I think it's I think it's incredible that the Olympics actually happened in the middle of everything that was going on. So there are loads of positives in Tokyo um, from a sporting perspective and from a socio-cultural perspective as well. You know, these games happen, which was really good for, for morale at the time. Um, there were lots of challenges. We tried really hard at Loughborough to go through the acclimatization uh, using the heat and climate chambers. Same when I got back to Belfast and Sinai. So yeah, did a lot of good prep, but I think it's really hard to replicate the humidity rather than the heat. Okay. So the heat I find I, I cope pretty well in. The humidity, both Tokyo and Rio, was incredibly challenging and um, probably the biggest challenge was the humidity as opposed to the heat so um, it was good it was great to, to run the second olympics but i don't think i've quite got the performance out of the olympics that i that i want yet so um so we'll see but at least it's only three years um <laughs> cycle now yeah it's not is, too long yeah. to go back um so it's it, it is great that the games happen and it was a wonderful experience. I'll never use injury as an excuse for anything. I was there, I was prepared, I committed hard, I trained hard to get myself there in a good position. And it just didn't quite click out on the day. Like, with a few little challenges in the race, a few little challenges before the race. Um, but the race itself very much seemed like, from the viewer's perspective anyway, is a bit of a war of attrition. A lot of people were dropping, so even to like basically stay in the race and keep on the game was seemed pretty tricky on the day, just because of the conditions. I uh, de definitely so. Like I started running, and I was going to be like, right, let's go, let's go really conservatively. And I looked around, and I think I was last on the road. And I was like, just kind of stick to your game plan. It is you've set it out because you've had a look at the conditions, you've had a look at what could potentially happen, and it's, it was going quite well. But very early on, like by halfway, I'd already begin to feel sort of some tightness in my hips and, and my, glute, and my uh, quads um, which is unusual I never really never really get that so aerobically I felt great heart rate I felt good but the little niggle in my back just kind of was forcing itself into my quads so okay. even in play I had to kind of adjust it yeah. a little bit um, but yeah it very much became you got to stay in the race like if you make the finish line <laughs> that's that was more than quite a few people yeah. were able to do. So I, I, I said at the time, like, I couldn't show up to school on the following Monday knowing that some of the students had set up yeah. to watch the race. 
and say like, oh, sorry guys, it got really tough and I stopped. <laughs> so it's kind of the last, yeah. last thing you really want to do. We talk about resilience, we talk about strength and adversity yeah. with our students. And I think- You, uh, you want to lead by both, example. Yeah, and both of those really came into play that day. <laughs> it was great, again, it was a great experience. Everything about it. I was satisfied because I finished knowing that actually I'd done everything I could. Didn't go exactly the plan, but but I planned well, I prepped well. It's just, that's yeah. marathon running, isn't it? Doesn't always work out that way. So it's about sort of 600 meters. Got measured out at 400, 800 uh, and a mile. So we kind of get little, Good. little markers in between. It's normally quite quiet. During the session, are you doing any hydration, nutrition, or is it just? I brought a drink and I brought a gel. So yeah. as it currently stands in Seville, I don't actually have drinks on the table. Okay. So I've got to get used to even just yeah. tying bits yeah. and pieces. So I'll put a gel down my back and I'll, I'll drink a little bit today. But uh, not huge amounts on nutrition in this session. So I've had a, a good breakfast, a couple of coffees, and that's been enough to get me to get me going, get me started. He said it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it he says, if I were you, I would do the last six. He told me last six. I'm not him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, cool. I'm not him. There we go. Yeah, so like, hi, Frank. <laughs> hi, Frank. Uh, so you're doing, so here, you're doing what, six by a mile today, is it? Or what's the, what's Se the plan? Se session one today yeah. is six, six by a mile with Kev. Yeah. Session two today is five by 2K plus 10K. Yeah, job job done a bit this morning and then uh, get some rest and come back again. Yeah. So what pace are you looking to hit this evening? It's, I hear it's pretty um, quick. The, this morning's quicker. So this morning's like okay. a, an interval session. Um, and then this evening, is more like time on your feet so it's like this this evening's at outside marathon pace okay um, whereas today's like this morning's 10k effort basically and uh, so how far out are you from your first marathon like when when do you normally do the kind of special block um so no we have uh i'm nine weeks out from manchester um we probably do like depending on how big the block is like three or four special block days um but as, as you get closer to the marathon it gets more specific so yeah i'm kind of just i'm probably just like just, just going to the end of uh of kind of like strength based kind of phase of just time on my feet and you know plodding around so uh, you've run 215 yeah 215 last year was my um at kew gardens it was the debut marathon yeah it was pretty brutal yeah like, kew gardens looked tough it was uh, a yeah, tough day I, you, did you end up running alone for a lot of that as well you get quite pretty, isolated pretty, or? pretty much like yeah. it was um we were gonna go out at like 66 ish for like through halfway and it was tough so i didn't go with it but i didn't slow down enough um <laughs> to go with the group behind um so ran ran loads of it solo um and like the the, the course was the course was okay if you had to run two three four laps but yeah we had to run 12 and a half laps um there's a lot of tight corners as well that must have that must have started to yeah, fatigue a bit it was the corners again weren't too bad if you did two or three laps yeah uh, but once you did like when you know, seven, seven eight laps in 20 miles those corners hurt and especially when you're by yourself and it was pretty windy and again it was it was okay one way but it wasn't the other so it was kind of like work hard into the wind try and recover on the way back down work hard into the wind um so yeah i'm hoping i'm hoping for a bigger group at manchester and better weather and what's the target for manchester have you got a time in mind or are you just really just go with it and see like i believe i, I believe i could have run quicker at q had the, like everything gone well but you'd like you, you don't know what the marathon's like until you run a marathon. Um, was, I, so was that that was your debut as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and like you know, everybody said you, you know what it's like after 20 miles, and after 20 miles, like I felt okay at like 20, 21 miles, <laughs> and 22 miles. It, like, it was like running into a brick wall. Um, but Ma Manchester, like targets, probably to run somewhere around like it, well, the the, Euro the European times is 2:14:30, 2, and the commies is 2:14. I think I can run those times. Yeah. Um, I don't know what anybody else can run, so it, that will depend on the day. But like my, my goal is to go out and run inside those times, and yeah. that's 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 my job done. Um, we'll, we'll see what anybody else brings on the day. You look very fresh. <laughs> What's your normal warm up then? Just quickly before you go, what does uh, it just? So normally jog over, so two, two, three miles, uh, some some light drills. I'm not the most technical, unfortunately. So if you've seen any of them, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and then some strides, and then pretty much yeah, get going. And what shoes are you wearing for the session uh, today? These are Adios Six. Uh, quite quite nice, quite nice shoe. And you're a bit, a bit dirty today, but. Uh, That's yeah. what comes with winter in the UK. It is, yeah. That's and it. are you you're sponsored by Adidas? Are you uh, I'm not actually. No, 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 you're no, just no, no. Unsponsored I'm not. then. Unsponsored, which is which is fine. But uh, yeah, these are these are nice. 
a nice choice today. Uh, Excellent. So yeah, because you, you, I hope you're going to be uh, showing all the kids this video in class. Yeah, it's, uh, we do this part of the GCSE PE. Yeah. The, uh, Sweat elite in the classroom in for the, the classroom, first time. Absolutely. Well, welcome aboard. Okay. So what? What was that first one? Is it? Four forty-five. Should be more like four fifty. He was kind of the start. Like. Okay. Okay. So we'll use it back to the next. Yeah. One two, just to kind of get the marker in. Yeah. <laughs> Beach and College bottle. Marathon advice. Poor idea. Be better prepared. <laughs> yeah, they, they, you can't tell wind speed on camera, so it's as it's, it's as windy as you tell them it is. <laughs> it's a cyclone in here. Full headwind. Yeah, I hear you're the sensible one, Frank. You're here to you're here to calm the pace down, keep it controlled. <laughs> Into the sessions, I'll get it wrong. Long runs, can't get it wrong. Fruit salad. Excellent. Multi pack one that gets left at the end. <laughs>
Are you guys going to take like a rapid bite on the front then? Is that normally how you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah just switch about. <laughs> Can't do it with stand back. Do you want? I wouldn't even deny that. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're a coach there. Be sensible, guys. <laughs> Once in a week. Yeah, here they're on 10 by 3 minutes, I think. With the guys this morning. 3 minutes, 9 seconds. Yeah, right. Is there a... I want you to sting the rendition of Loughborough's... Loughborough's Cat. Yeah, oh, boy. That's the Loughborough's Cat. Special there we go. Special occasion t-shirt. Probably the first time he's ever seen me in this. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice me, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, let's go sandbag. Trying to dodge his friends.